Hello, everyone. If you want to learn more about the basics of rail monitoring and how that compares to other types of monitoring you might be more familiar with, this is the video for you. And especially if you want to find out how T4D rail fits into that process and that story. So let's talk about it. The first thing that we might be familiar with with prism monitoring is the actual prism that we use for our monitoring targets. So we are still going to be using that and we're going to be placing it onto strategic spots in our rail site. And once we do that, we need to be able to understand what our initial setup looks like. So what do we do? We conduct a track as built survey to know the track's original geometry. How is the track originally shaped and positioned on this earth? And then we also want to know the original coordinates of where we place our permanently installed monitoring prisms. And in this first step, how does T4D rail play into this? Well, we have a seamless integration of as-built surveys into T4D rail when we use either of these two track as-built survey solutions. The first of which is a track measuring bar paired with the Trimble Access Track Gauge Survey app, or if you use the Trimble Guido system. If you do your track as built survey with either of these solutions, there is going to be a seamless integration into T4D Rail. The next thing that we want to do is talk about how these prisms are strategically placed. So for rail monitoring, the prisms are placed for each side of the track. Then the two prisms on either side need to be considered together. So a prism pair is going to be considered as a chainage and each chainage represents station or location along the track length. So how does T4D rail fit into that? T4D rail does this configuration automatically for you. It knows which two prisms are a prism pair, and it will tell you which chainage they are at. It knows which prism is on the left side, which prism is on the right side. It will do that all automatically for you, which is a huge time saver, and it is less error prone than doing it manually. And then you are able to review what has been automatically configured, and it can also detect inconsistent intervals between changes. If, for example, you are placing your prism pairs at every five meters along the track, the software might detect that at the last two changes, the distance between them was actually 10 meters instead of five meters. So it will detect that inconsistency and label it as a red flag that you want to pay attention to. So once we start observing and measuring to the prisms during our monitoring round, we need to be able to relate any detected prism movement to the track itself because we want to monitor how the track is moving, not how the prisms are moving. Because if we just rely on how the prisms are moving, then we might have an incorrect understanding of what's happening to the actual track. So for example, if we look at the illustrations here, you can have different setups for the prisms. Sometimes the prism is going to be higher than the rail. Sometimes it's going to be lower. Sometimes it's going to be further out. Sometimes it's going to be further in. And sometimes it's going to tell us that our track is tilted when our track is not tilted. So we need to be able to apply the vertical and lateral offsets to each of our monitoring observations when we measure to our prisms. T4D rail automatically calculates the prism offsets for each of the prisms. It doesn't just apply one set of offsets to all the prisms. No, it calculates a unique set of offsets for each prism. And not only does it automatically calculate that, it automatically applies those offsets each time you have a new measurement. This is a huge time saver and it is less error prone 
than doing it manually or assuming the same offsets for all of your prisms. And then, for example, if you had a prism that got destroyed and you needed to replace it, you can recalculate the prism offsets for the replacement prism. And T4D Rail supports semi-automated and fully automated prism monitoring workflows. So if you're measuring your targets through a fully automated total station, cool, T4D Rail fully supports that. Or if you are measuring your prisms through a semi-automated approach where you are physically on site to be able to measure to your targets, T4D Rail module still supports that workflow as well, and you can still be able to benefit. T4D Rail also is able to detect missing prism measurements. So if something was obstructing the prism and you weren't able to measure to that target or the target was destroyed, it can detect that there was a missing prism measurement. Lastly, how do we make sense of any detected track movement? We can view the track movement through the lens of track geometry parameters. And these track geometry parameters help us understand how the track's shape and position has changed over time. I'm going to skip the slides that talk about each of the parameters in detail and leave that for another video. I'll just list the parameters in the top right corner and mention that T4D Rail allows us to be able to select our reference date when calculating changes over time. So what is going to be our reference? Is it going to be the start of the project or the middle of the project? The next thing T4D Rail does is it automatically calculates all these track geometry parameters. These calculations aren't the most simple calculations and being able to do that automatically is a huge time saver and it's less error prone. Another thing that T4D Rail does is that you can choose which of these parameters you actually want to monitor. If you don't want to monitor all of them, you can disable them. And when T4D Rail was designed, we took into consideration Rail Authority standards when it comes to track geometry parameters. And when we want to visualize the data related to our track, there is more than one rail specific way to visualize this information. So that's easier to make sense of your data and act on it quickly. And speaking of quickly, T4D Rail will quickly and automatically notify you of any movement that exceeds any thresholds that you have set. There are different levels of thresholds. There is an attention stage, there is a warning stage, and then there is an alarm stage. You can specify who gets notified for which of the different stages and how they want to be notified. And all of this is done automatically for you just need to set up your project once and let T4D Rail do its thing. And that's the whole rail monitoring and T4D Rail story. I will put in the description a link to this overview if you wanted it as a PDF and a link to T4D Rail if you would like more information about that as well. Stay tuned for more videos. And remember, monitoring never sleeps.